In this video, we'll look at how to compute the work done by a force field on an object moving along a curve. And then we'll work through some examples. In our last video, we saw that the work done by a force field F with components F1 and F2 on an object moving along a curve C defined parametrically by R of T on an interval from A to B is given by W equals the line integral of F dot dr which is the same as the line integral of f1 dx plus the line integral of f2 dy. The two line integrals at the end there are different than the line integrals that we've worked with before. Previously, we computed line integrals with respect to arc length. We had integrals of some function ds. To compute those integrals, we used the parameterization of our curve. We replaced the differential ds with the magnitude of r prime dt. To compute line integrals with respect to x or with respect to y, we're going to do something similar. We're going to replace the differential dx with something in terms of dt, and the differential dy again with something in terms of dt. In the parameterization of our curve, we see that x is a function of t, so we can take the derivative of x with respect to t. So dx dt is x prime of t, or we can rewrite that as dx equals x prime of t dt. Similarly, y is a function of t, so we can write dy equals y prime dt. Therefore, if we want to compute the line integral of f1 xy dx, well, we would integrate f1, replace the x and y's in terms of the parameterization. So I'll write this as f1 of x of t, y of t, and then the dx we're going to replace with x prime of t dt. Since the parameterization goes from t equals a to t equals b, that's going to be our limits of integration. Similarly, to compute the line integral of f2 xy dy, we have the integral of f2, replace the x and y's with their parameterization, so I have x of t, y of t, and then the dy I'm going to replace with y prime of t dt. Again, I'm integrating from a to b. So with these two formulas, I am now able to compute the work done by a force field on an object moving along a curve. So let's do some examples now. In this first example, let f be the force field negative y comma x. Suppose an object is moving along a line segment from negative 1, negative 1 to 3, 7. Find the work done by the force field on this object. Let's start by drawing a picture. If we plot our force field, we get something like this. The object moves along a line segment from negative 1, negative 1 to 3, 7. So our curve looks something like this. So the work done by our force field is the line integral of f dot dr, which is the line integral of f1 dx plus the line integral of f2 dy. So first we'll need to write down a parameterization of our curve. Since the curve is a line segment, I need to figure out the direction the line is going in and also the point where it starts. So to find the direction, you just take the difference between the x-coordinates, that's 3 minus negative 1, which gives me 4, and the difference between the y-coordinates, which is 7 minus negative 1, which gives me 8. And the starting point is negative 1, negative 1. So our parameterization is r of t equals negative 1 plus 4t, comma, negative 1 plus 8t for t between 0 and 1. With this parameterization, we know that the x component, x of t, is negative 1 plus 4t, and the y component, y of t, is negative 1 plus 8t. So now let's compute the work. The work is the line integral of f1 dx plus line integral of f2 dy. Where f1 is the x component of the force field, and f2 is the y component of the force field. When we write these line integrals in terms of the parameterization, we have integral of f1, the dx gets replaced with x prime of t dt, and our integral goes from 0 to 1. Then we have integral of f2 times dy, the dy gets replaced with y prime of t dt, and again the integral goes from 0 to 1. Writing this out, we have the integral from 0 to 1 of f1, which is negative y, so that's negative negative 1 plus 8t, times x prime of t, 
x prime of t is 4, and then dt, plus integral from 0 to 1 of f2. f2 is x, so we'll write down negative 1 plus 4t, times y prime of t, which is 8, and then dt. This simplifies as integral from 0 to 1, I have negative 32t plus 4 dt plus integral from 0 to 1 of 32t minus 8 dt. I won't go through the details of these integrations, but you should get negative 4 as your final answer. As I mentioned in our last video, it's possible to have negative work done. Since our object is moving on a set path, there may be times when the force field goes against the direction of motion. In those instances, the work done would be negative. In this next example, let f be the force field negative yx. So this is the same force field from our previous example. This time, our object is moving along the parabola y equals x squared minus 2, starting from the point negative 1, negative 1 to the point 3, 7. Find the work done by the force field on our object. Again, I'll illustrate the force field. When I draw my curve, I start at the point negative 1, negative 1, and end at 3, 7. Notice that I have the same initial and terminal point as the last example. This time our path is the parabola y equals x squared minus 2. Since our curve is defined in the form y equals some function of x, we can find the parameterization really easily. Our parameterization, r of t, is t as the x component and t squared minus 2 as the y component, where t goes between negative 1 and 3. So in this parameterization, our x component, x of t, is t, and our y component, y of t, is t squared minus 2. So remember that our work done is the line integral of f dot dr, which can be written as the sum of the line integral f1 dx plus the line integral of f2 dy. Using our parameterization, we can write this as the integral from negative 1 to 3 of f1. f1 is negative y times dx gets replaced with x prime of t dt. Then we have plus integral from negative 1 to 3. f2 here is x, and then the dy gets replaced with y prime of t dt. So plugging things in, we have integral from negative 1 to 3. Negative y, y is t squared minus 2, and then times x prime, which is 1, and then dt. Then we have plus integral from negative 1 to 3. x is t times y prime. y prime is 2t, and then we have dt. Simplifying this, we have integral from negative 1 to 3 of negative t squared plus 2 dt plus the integral from negative 1 to 3 of 2t squared dt. Again, I won't go through the details of these integrals, but the result you should get is 52 thirds. In the two examples that we've done, we used the same force field and we had the same initial point and the same terminal point. But because we took different paths, the amount of work done by the force field was different in the two cases. In the first problem, the work done was negative, but in the second problem, the work done is positive. This tells me that the object in the second example moved more in line with the force field. So that's it for this video. In our next video, we'll look at some force fields where the path that you take does not matter.